All right, we're back here with uh, Robert C. Davis for part two. We're just doing a little, little interviewing, and uh, we're asking him old historical questions about East Palestine, Ohio. Okay, uh, let's get back to the conversation about the Wood Street High School. Now, when I see some of the pictures, uh, I don't see... Um, I see half of the step is, steps are gone, but I don't see no wall in the original pictures where it was built around the block. But when I go up there now, I see the old sandstone yeah. that go around the block that are like holding up some of the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, was those bricks part of the Axel school? No, I don't think so. So that wall around there has been there the whole time? Because I'd imagine back when they tore it down, I'm not sure exactly what year they tore it down, those are some heavy bricks, yeah. and a lot of them. Yeah. So I, like I said, I don't see it in the original pictures, at least the ones I have. It just looks like a nice sloped yard, some well, steps up the middle, but I don't see no, I don't, I don't, I don't see the uh, foundation being supported by them brick that I do now. Well. Where did those brick come from? Probably old from old barn foundations. Some of these old barns around town have these great big, oh, they might be four feet long. Yeah, they're big. And uh, almost square-like. Mm-hmm, rectangle, well, very heavy. But you don't think it came from the school? Because it, it could have come from any old buildings around the country that uh, had there was some use for that somewhere else. Because it always I, is. When I was looking at that Wood Street picture the school, I don't see any brick around there, and I'm thinking maybe when they tore down the building, they started using some of it. That that's a possibility. I mean, we've had this question on Facebook, and we're just. Everyone's throwing their theories in, and yeah. so I thought maybe you could just give us a clear-cut yeah. answer. <laughs> uh, did you finish school? High school. You made it all the way, graduated? Yes. What year did you graduate? 30, class of 39. Class of 39. My dad was one, wasn't even born yet. Class of 40. <laughs> class of 40. Class of 40. 40. 40. Okay. I guess it, maybe it is for you. I've, I've got an old Afanian around here somewhere, and I have not been able to find that. Mm. 1940. You grew up in the Depression times. When I the, sure did. When the stock, stock market crashed in yeah. October of 29. Was times really hard for you and your family growing up? Oh, yeah. As I told you, my dad and mother lived on East Clark Street. When we moved there, it was practically, there was only one other family moved there before we did. And old uh, <clears throat> Dave L. Wonger built quite a few houses around town. That was one of them. And as I said, Dad paid $25 a month rent there. Then that house on Main Street was available. And as I told you before, that old uh, Webb Moore was an undertaker. And of course, <clears throat> like everybody else, he passed on. And, and that house was available. My dad bought or rented that house for $10 a month. Was there ever, when you had, you had seven brothers and two sisters. Yes. And counting yourself and made 10. How many? Ten. Yeah. Seven and plus, or nine plus you, so that's ten. Was there ever a time that it was just so, uh, you struggled, your family struggled so much that uh, you went to bed hungry? Was no. there ever times like no. that? No. You always had some food? Uh, oh, yeah. Did you have any farm animals or anything, or you just had the garden? We had a big garden. Big, big garden. My mother, with the help of my sister Ruth, she was old enough to help her, they would put up a hundred quarts of beans, a hundred quarts of uh, corn, 
cut off of the cob, 100 quarts of applesauce. We went out <clears throat> in the country and picked blackberries. We'd ask, Dad would ask the farmer, blackberries was growing everywhere, and elderberries. We'd put, now there were days, there were days when we would sit down at noon and have, remember the five loaves of bread I was telling you? I'd yes. Pick up? We'd have bread and mother would heat up a big kettle of uh, blackberries from the cellar and that's what we had for lunch. At dinner time in the evening we always had some kind of meat. And of course in the morning we had oatmeal and cornflakes and stuff like that, eggs. Hmm. Hardly ever had bacon. On Clark Street, my dad had a chicken coop, so we had eggs and we had chicken. Now you're not going to believe this, but out in the country, we had a big garden out there. There had been, the farmers sold all the year and sold off the timber. Back in those days, they didn't do anything with the slabs. They would take a, a big log, cut off this side, this side, this side, and this side. And the rest of it was discarded as a slab pile. Nowadays, they take that, those slabs, they grind them out, and they make uh, whatever, they, whatever chemical they put into it along with uh, adhesive stuff. Right. Uh, veneer? Uh, not, not, not veneer. Paneling? Before you get to the veneer, what's in between? Particle board. Right. Hmm. So there was a, there was a lot of groundhogs in that slab pile. We'd go out there and work the garden. My dad always took a shotgun with him. <laughs> And quite a few times we come home with a groundhog. <laughs> now we got groundhogs out back here along the creek and under the tree trunks and stuff like that. We wouldn't even think of going out there and eating that groundhog. Did you guys eat groundhog back Absolutely. then? Absolutely. One one summer. What did it taste like? like? Like chicken? Better than chicken. Really? All all white meat. Huh. You see, a groundhog is one of the cleanest animals there is. They're strictly vegetarian. Hmm. I never do. Now, you yeah. take a chicken, a chicken will eat pe peck at anything. Well, since we're on camera, I can't say it. <laughs> I've got a dead spot now. <laughs> so, Dad, Dad would skin it and bring it home. And mother would dice it all up and put it in a big kettle in salt water overnight to get the wild taste out of it. Now, now, how often would you eat groundhog? Every other week? You know, Once a month? Oh, hell no, more than that. Maybe two or three times a week. Hmm. And, and my mother could do wonders with a quarter with a quarter's worth of hamburger. She'd make meatloaf, she'd make patties and stuff like that from the store. She'd do a lot of bacon? Oh yeah. Like uh, cookies she'd and make, cakes she'd and make homemade bread. bread. Cookies and pies. Well you were buying the bread, huh? If I, she was that Well, once in a while she would bake too. Okay. Uh, how, how old were you when you got married? Twenty-one. What was her name? Nancy Pennell. How did you, uh... Meet her. How did you meet? On a blind date. Really? Yep. Who set you up? Uh, a good friend by the name of Jim Schroeds. Lived down in Darlington. 
what did he say? Now has a friend that needs a date and well, brought you along. And I got acquainted with those guys through my through my brother. And uh, that night I was supposed to have a date with Jim's sister. So I got all dressed up and Jim and and uh, Huck McGath come up. I didn't have a car. Picked me up, but Jim had his dad's car at that time, and for that evening and. It was a great big Nash, which was a big automobile oh, back yeah. then. And uh, Huck and uh, Jim and Mary and Huck and Flossie Beresford was in the back seat. And uh, Jim's sister Eleanor was supposed to be my, my date. So we went back to his house, pick up his sister. Went up to the door, Jim introduced me to her, and she says, Jim, she says, didn't I tell you we already got a date with Frank Casey? Mm -hmm. Oh, he says, I completely forgot about it. Well, he says, I know where there's another girl. Mm -hmm. So we drove out in the country, and uh, Jim went, went up, it was on a Saturday evening, and Jim went up, and uh, Talked to Nancy about meeting a nice guy. Well, and, was, and you're this nice yeah, guy, right? Yeah, I'm not that nice guy. <laughs> and she said, well, give, give me a couple minutes to get ready. Because she had no idea that Jim was coming, you know. And so, I suppose about ten minutes, she come out. Now, she had a, a younger brother and a younger sister, and they sister brother was about three years younger and the little girl was <clears throat> Reed Archibald's wife, Miriam. Mm -hmm. And she is now 88. Mm -hmm. And Nancy came out. Now Huck and Flossie were bigger people. So Flossie had to sit on Huck's lap. Nancy had to sit on my lap. <laughs> this was a, a first date. So we, <clears throat> we got in that car and we drove over to uh, Boardman. Can you hold this story? Because I want to make a third clip of this. Okay. 